As a senior undergraduate student, I'll be graduating from college in less than a month. At this stage of life, there are many concerns for the future. What job will I land? Where will I be living? What is the next step? And while these matters are certainly on my mind, there's in all honesty another future concern that carries much more weight, and that is human-caused climate change, also known as the climate crisis. Now, I realize that this topic has been receiving a lot of attention recently, but for very legitimate reasons. The climate crisis once seemed like a distant problem in the future that we could address decades from now. However, recent studies and projections indicate that this global problem is approaching us a lot sooner than we had originally expected. In 2018, a landmark report was released by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, also known as the IPCC, which is the world's leading organization in assessing the climate crisis. And in this report, the IPCC insisted that we must decrease our greenhouse gas emissions to prevent further warming of the Earth, which is indicated by this chart assembled by NASA. And this plot demonstrates the change in the Earth's global average temperature when compared to pre-industrial levels. And since the onset of the 1960s, the Earth's global average temperature has been steadily increasing. And in this same report, the IPCC asserted that we cannot let the Earth's global average temperature increase by 1.5 degrees Celsius when compared to pre-industrial levels. This may seem like a pretty small temperature difference, just a global average increase of 1.5 degrees Celsius. However, the ramifications for surpassing this temperature threshold are striking. According to the IPCC, once we get over this temperature milestone, 191 million additional people will be exposed to severe drought due to rising temperatures. 128 million total people will be at risk of coastal flooding due to rising sea levels. And upwards of 3.9 billion total people may be facing extreme heat waves due to escalating temperatures. Therefore, we must decrease our greenhouse gas emissions to prevent these global catastrophes from manifesting and to remain underneath this 1.5 degrees Celsius mark. And we have to act quickly, and we must act decisively, for the clock is literally ticking. At current greenhouse gas emission rates, this is how much time we have until we surpass this temperature threshold. Six years and 251 days. Not a few centuries, heck, not even a couple of decades, just six years and 251 days. And this countdown was assembled with data collected by the IPCC and has been displayed in cities such as Berlin, as well as Manhattan. Therefore, this problem of the global climate crisis, it's not in the far distant future. It's now. It's approaching, and it is soon. And this global problem is, frankly, very personal to me. I will not even be 30 years old once this countdown strikes zero. Unless decisive action is taken, my generation and all future generations will live the majority of our lives in a world plagued with environmental crises. Thus, addressing the climate crisis is of the utmost importance to me and my fellow peers, and we are motivated to develop new solutions. Over the course of the next six years, we have an opportunity to get creative. We have an opportunity to approach the climate crisis from new angles and apply new ideas to lower our greenhouse gas emissions. And fortunately, there is a solution that has been proven to help and is something everyone in this room can do multiple times of every single day. In order to more effectively combat the climate crisis, we need to start taking a closer look at what foods are on our plates. Hmm, this may seem a little irrelevant. How is food and agriculture linked to the global climate crisis? Well, it turns out, that the agricultural sector in the United States is a significant contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. And that is indicated 
by this chart assembled by the United States Department of Agriculture. And this indicates the different proportions of greenhouse gases emitted in different economic sectors of the United States. And specifically, 10.5% of all greenhouse gases emitted in the United States comes solely from the production of agriculture. Therefore, we cannot leave agriculture out of the conversation when discussing ways to lower our greenhouse gas emissions. And therefore, what foods we choose to eat directly impact the climate crisis. So we need to start shifting our focus, shifting our strategies on addressing the climate crisis so that we recognize the effects of the agricultural sector and seek to mitigate them. Now, one may look at this chart and point out agriculture. It's just 10.5%. There are other sectors that emit more. Why should we even be caring about the agricultural sector? And the answer is availability. While it would certainly help, not everyone can go out and purchase an electric vehicle or install solar panels on their houses. However, what we choose to eat is a decision that many of us are fortunate enough to make every few hours of every single day. Therefore, there is ample availability and ample opportunity to lower our greenhouse gases simply by looking at what foods are in our diets. And this prompts a couple of logical follow-up questions like, which foods should we prioritize or avoid? And which foods emit more greenhouse gases when they're being produced? And researchers at the University of Michigan sought to answer those potent questions. After conducting exhaustive research in over 6,000 different types of foods, they released this next chart, which indicates the greenhouse gas contributions by various food types in the average American diet. And coming in at number one is meat, out of all the greenhouse gases that are emitted during the production of our food, 56% of those emissions come solely from the production of meat. Meat is then followed by dairy, beverages, fish and seafood, eggs, and then various fruits and vegetables. These same researchers at the University of Michigan also released this next chart, indicating the pounds of carbon dioxide emitted per serving of different types of foods. And coming in at number one is beef. Making just one hamburger patty emits 6.6 .6 pounds of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which is a lot of carbon dioxide. Beef is then followed by cheese, pork, poultry, eggs, milk, and then various fruits and vegetables. Now, the data becomes interesting and patterns begin to emerge when we put these foods into two main categories animal products, <laughs> such as meat and dairy, and then plant-based foods, such as fruits and vegetables. And so these are the same exact charts as we saw before, but let's apply this categorization of animal products labeled red and plant-based foods labeled green. And as you can see on the left-hand chart, the animal product foods take up a larger proportion of foods that emit more greenhouse gases. Now, on the right-hand chart, the top six foods that emit the most amount of greenhouse gases are all animal product foods. Conversely, on the other hand, plant-based foods emit far fewer greenhouse gas emissions when they're being produced. Therefore, a shift from an animal product-centered diet to one that prioritizes plant-based foods would serve as a legitimate strategy for cutting our greenhouse gas emissions and ultimately combating the climate crisis. And when I heard about this information, I started to shift my own diet towards a more plant-based direction starting about two years ago. And I started by simply not eating meat for just one meal of the day. That's it, I chose it just to be breakfast. Lunch and dinner, the exact same as before, but breakfast just didn't have any meat in it. After getting used to that for a few weeks, I decided to not eat meat on Sundays in addition to maintaining this plant-based breakfast. And by taking these small, short, deliberate steps, the transition was seamless and a lot easier than I expected. And the key is a slow, gradual transition. Now, a prominent concern with eating less animal products and more plant-based foods is not getting enough protein or enough nutrition 
And that was certainly on my mind. For when I started making this shift in my diet, I was also running on the Hope College cross-country and track teams. At this stage of my life, I was demanding a lot from my body. I was running upwards of 70 miles a week and completing half marathons almost every single weekend. But by deliberately eating a well-balanced plant-based diet and getting protein from sources such as chickpeas, lentils, beans, and peanut butter and other sources, I was able to maintain this intense training regime. And not only that, I actually ran my fastest times in the one mile, the 3K, the 5K, and the half marathon races when I was eating an entirely plant-based diet. Thus, this shift did not hinder my athletic ability, and my body was getting the fuel that it needed to run upwards of 70 miles a week by eating an environmentally friendly, plant-based diet. And this shift towards a more plant-based focus is not just unique to me. This is a movement that has been gaining momentum. And I will now show you a few larger scale examples, starting with Meatless Monday. Meatless Monday, as the name suggests, is a program in which participants refrain from eating meat during one day of the week, which just happens to be Mondays. And as a specific example of this, the town of Bedford, New York, which has a population of about 17,000 people, incorporated their own 12-week Meatless Monday program back in 2019. Household surveys were conducted before and after the 12 weeks to determine how effective the program was at decreasing their greenhouse gas emissions. And the results of the surveys indicated that the town of Bedford, New York, decreased their greenhouse gas emissions by 23,000 kilograms, which is equivalent to driving 56,000 less miles. And that was accomplished by just not eating meat for one day of the week for only 12 weeks. That much environmental benefit for just a small change in their weekly habits. As another example, the New York Presbyterian Hospital System has incorporated their own Meatless Monday program for their visitors and staff of over 20,000 employees. These new plant-based meals meet the guidelines of their Be Healthy program, and thus, even the healthcare industry is recognizing the importance of plant-based diets and are starting to take steps in that direction. The same can be seen in our educational system. In the spring of 2019, the mayor of New York City announced that the New York City Public Schools District would be adopting a Meatless Monday program. And this is the largest schools district in the United States, serving over 1,800 schools and over 1.1 million students. And this massive educational system is starting to take steps towards a more plant-based direction. And as a final example, we'll go international to the country of the Netherlands, where they sponsor a national week without meat starting back in 2018. During this specific week, both restaurants and citizens of the Netherlands participate. And in 2020, over 900 restaurants did not serve meat. And over 2.4 million people participated all in the name of lowering their greenhouse gas emissions and combating the climate crisis. Thus, this plant-based movement has momentum. But none of this could have been accomplished without individual effort, which is exactly what I'm asking from everyone today. Now, let me be clear. I'm not asking anybody to become vegan. I'm not asking anybody to become vegetarian. Simply reducing our consumption of meat has been proven to help. So for those who are able to, I encourage you to attempt to not eat meat for just one meal of the day. That's it. Start very small. And if you feel inclined to do so, continue to take small, gradual steps towards a more plant-based direction. I would appreciate it. Those at risk of coastal flooding Drought and rising sea levels and heat waves would appreciate it, and future generations would be grateful as well. Collective action has and will make a difference, but we have to act decisively, for the clock is ticking. Thank you. <laughs>